Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to try upcycling an older make of mine that isn't getting worn. So this is the Elizabeth Suzanne Georgia dress. I will insert some video here of me wearing the dress. It's just not getting worn and there are a couple of reasons why. I think that being one of my earlier makes, I didn't do a great job of binding the neckline. And I think you can see here a little bit, there's some bunching. It's probably more visible in the video clip that I'll put here. I've come to learn that I'm not a huge fan of the way that boxy tops, <laughs> um, if they have this little band for the sleeve cap, it kind of like wings out when you're wearing it, and I'm not a huge fan of that. And also I think just a, a really long, baggy, kind of like sack of a dress, um, it can work. I, I like that style of dress, but there's something about the fit of this one alongside the color. I don't know, I'm just not reaching for it. And it's quite a bit of fabric, right? It's a really long, boxy dress. So I've got quite a bit of fabric here to work with. And my goal is to turn it into a top. I do love the fabric. It's a really lovely blue. It's really soft. I purchased this from fabricsstore.com. They specialize in linen fabrics. And I want to wear the fabric. I definitely want to wear the fabric. But as I said, I'm just not reaching for the dress. So my plan is actually to use one of the fabricsstore.com free patterns and I want to turn this fabric and this dress into the Kara top which is a linen top it's long sleeve it's got a loose oversized fit and I just think I'm going to get a lot more wear out of a top that I can wear with a variety of bottoms than I will get out of this one really long oversized kind of shapeless dress so I think my plan of attack <laughs> is to take out the bottom hem of the dress and then I'll probably just cut the sides. They are serged and I don't really want to unpick all of the serged stitches. So I think I'm just going to unpick the hem and then cut the sides and hopefully I'll have enough fabric from this dress to make a top. I might have to play with the length of the top or the length of the sleeves, but hopefully there's enough here. So while I go ahead and unpick all of these seams, I'm going to print out my free pattern. It's a PDF download from the fabricstore.com website and I'll tape it together, cut it out, and we'll get going. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Rebecca and I talk lots about sewing, knitting, and slow fashion. So if those are interests of yours as well, please do consider hitting the like and subscribe button below. And let's go ahead and get into this upcycling project. Munbin very kindly gifted me this portable wireless Bluetooth thermal printer. This printer uses special paper that allows for ink-free printing. If you're like me and you print lots of PDF sewing patterns at home, this is a great tool. Ink can be expensive and this thermal printer does not require any ink to print. You can use the rolled paper that comes with the printer but I also really recommend these packs of perforated folded paper because it's easy to separate them before taping together to assemble your PDF sewing pattern. These printers are lightweight, low profile, easy to use, and you can even print via a Bluetooth connection directly from your phone. The printer can be charged with a micro USB cable and it comes with an adapter for Mac plugins that you can see I've used here. I will note that there is a max file size when using the Bluetooth printing feature, so if you're printing a really large file, you'll need to do so by plugging into your computer. Overall, I really recommend this product. It was kindly gifted to me, but if you're looking for a portable and ink-free printing option for your sewing patterns, definitely check out the link in my description box below. Now let's go ahead and get into this upcycling project. Um, I did end up making a muslin of the Kara top pattern 
just because I really love this fabric and I don't want to cut it up and have the result be something that I'm not in love with. So I used my muslin fabric and I did one sleeve, but I did both the front and the back just to kind of get an idea of how it's going to fit. And I've decided to um, change the shape of the sides. They kind of angle out towards the bottom from the armpit to the hem of the top. It kind of angles out a bit. And so I'm just going to straighten that. And as I said, I might end up shortening the whole top a little bit depending on how much fabric I have. Um, I think the sleeve length is fine from my muslin, but as I said, I might have to shorten the sleeves. We'll see how much I can squeeze out of this dress. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I've folded the front of the dress in half, right sides together. I haven't separated it at the shoulder, so there's the back of the dress. This is the front panel folded in half, and I can fit the front of the Kara top no problem at the bottom, and I think I will have no problem fitting the back at the bottom from the back of the dress. And so I'm thinking with the sleeve piece, I might be able to keep the long sleeve if I just have a seam kind of in the middle of it. Like I could cut two of the top of the sleeve from the front panel and then from the back panel with this similar area on the back, I could cut the bottom theoretically and then just have a seam in the middle. And I don't think the grain is gonna be much of a problem. And I think that might be a good way to maintain the front and the back panels without any seams and then it might be a cool feature to have a seam kind of mid sleeve so that's what i'm thinking i might try got the front, the back, the long sleeve that's split and I will join it in the middle so there will be a seam in the middle of the sleeve and then scraps were just enough for the binding and over here is what I have left which is basically the neck hole. So I do have a few more scrap pieces should I need a little bit more binding but I think we are in good shape. Okay, so what I'm doing first is just joining those two sleeve pieces together. Before I begin constructing the shirt, I just want that long sleeve to be one piece. So I'm going to sew them right sides together and then I will serge the seam to finish it. And then I'm also going to top stitch it down because I don't want that seam allowance to flop around at all so I'm going to press it towards the bottom of the sleeve and then top stitch it down. I did lose a little bit of the sleeve length by having to cut it in two pieces and join them. However, I think I'm going to be able to make up for it when I hem the sleeves by just doing like a three-eighths of an inch turn up twice as opposed to I think the pattern has built in an inch and a half or so for the cuff area on the sleeve so I think it's going to work out just fine and I'm going to be able to maintain about the initial intended sleeve length. So after I assembled those sleeve pieces I am now joining the shirt front to the shirt back at the shoulders and I'll do a very similar thing where I sew at 3 eighths of an inch, serge those seam allowances and then also I'm pressing and top stitching those towards the back of the shirt. Once that's done I simply attach the sleeve heads and then serge that seam and then this shirt actually has you join the side of the shirt and the sleeve seam all in one so you kind of go from 
the bottom of the sleeve to the armpit and then down to the hem all in one go, which makes for a really simple, really quick construction process. And here you can see I've done just that. I'm flipping the shirt right side out. And now all we have left to do is attach the bias binding at the neckline. I did have to join two different scraps to get the required length for this piece of bias binding, but it wasn't particularly bulky and I think I did a much better job attaching it this time compared to the initial dress where I had some issues with puckering at the neckline.